Welcome to The Author Show, where we present new authors and books, from fiction to self-help and everything in between, you'll find it all here. To watch the TV version of our program, visit AuthorsWebTV.com. That's AuthorsWebTV.com. And now, let the show begin. Hi, this is Linda Thompson, your host for The Author Show. Lindsay loves chocolate. It tastes good. It makes her feel good. It never cheats on her like her almost ex-husband. It's her best friend. But someone wants her dead and uses her weak spot, chocolate, to try to murder her. That's how author Sally Bernithi begins the synopsis for her book, Death by Chocolate. Talk about a way to create curiosity. It's my pleasure to talk with Sally today. So, Sally, welcome to The Author Show. Thank you, Linda. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Sally, please give our listeners a quick overview of Death by Chocolate. Lindsay owns a chocolate shop. She is trying to get a divorce from her ex-husband who kicked her out, but now he doesn't want a divorce. And she has a neighbor that she has befriended that works in her chocolate shop. The neighbor has naturally blonde hair, but she dyes it brown. The neighbor insists on having an extra exit so she can always get away. The neighbor has locks on her door, and the neighbor has a small child. Lindsay, being very curious and nosy, wants to know what's going on with the neighbor. And in the ensuing portion of the book, someone is trying to kill Lindsay and kidnap the kid, and that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've just got to ask now, did you have a particular type of reader in mind while you were writing your book? You know, I really didn't. I was writing mostly for me, to entertain me. But at the same time, I felt there would be a lot of people out there, especially women, that could identify with liking chocolate and having an ex-husband they couldn't get rid of. And so yeah, maybe, yeah, the, a reader who likes chocolate and has an ex-husband or a husband she wishes was an ex. And <laughs> <laughs> well, if you were writing an article about death by chocolate, what would your headline be? Murder can be fun with chocolate. Oh, I like that. So you've written several books under different pen names. How would you describe your writing style? My writing style is different in each of the books. I used to write romance novels back in the 90s, and I was forced by the nature of the genre to write a more traditional, emotional type book. My writing style in the newer books, the mysteries, I would say it's fast paced. I hope it's entertaining, and it has my unique sense of humor throughout the book. Lindsay is a very interesting gal. Do Lindsay and your other characters resemble people you know, or are they imaginary? I've been told that Lindsay resembles me. That really wasn't intentional, but I suppose since I'm writing it, it was inevitable. Fred in the book is actually created from a guy that I went to high school with, and we've become very good friends since high school, but he is sort of enigmatic. I'm not sure he can do all the things Fred can do, but I know he has secrets. My personal opinion is that no mystery is complete without a cat. So what gave you the idea <laughs> to incorporate King Henry into your book? I had, and no longer have, unfortunately, but I had a wonderful cat. Uh, his name was Leo, but in all other respects, he was like King Henry. And I just wanted to include him in the book. I wanted to have him with me. And he was getting older as I was writing the book, so I knew he probably wasn't going to be around much longer. And now every time I write one of the chocolate books, it's like he's with me again. So, And everybody should have a good cat. Well, you've got that right. So in the front of your book, you have photos of Fred and King Henry. Are these the actual Fred and the actual King Henry? They are. And what did Fred think about you bringing him into your books? I wasn't really sure what he would think at first. <laughs> but he's thrilled. He goes around and tells everybody now, read your book, I'm in it. Does he any one thing come to mind that served as the inspiration for Death by Chocolate? Oh, I love chocolate. And I love thinking about murdering my ex-husband. So chocolate and murder. <laughs> when, when I was writing romance novels back in the 90s, well, after my third divorce, I figured out that uh, romance probably was not my specialty. So then I thought, yeah, okay, murder and chocolate, those are my specialties. So that was kind of my inspiration. Lindsay has a chocolate shop. 
And she, she does. does wonderful things with chocolate, but she can't cook worth a darn. Does that resemble you? <laughs> Actually, it does not. <laughs> I, I make wonderful chocolate, and I'm really a pretty good cook in every other way. But chocolate is my specialty. I make good other stuff, but I make incredible chocolate. And I actually had thought at one time that I would have liked to open a chocolate shop, but that didn't happen, so I just gave it to my character. <laughs> well, will Lindsay return to us in a sequel or a series? She will. I am just finishing up the most recent book in my other series, and as soon as I do, I'm going to start on the new chocolate book. In fact, I've already got lots of ideas. I'm writing them down on bits of paper to keep myself from going off because I really love writing the chocolate books and I love making the chocolate and testing it because you have to do that you know absolutely and this is where I give the caveat that I have read book one and I love the recipes and I love King Henry and so I really liked your book cover I love the skull and the crossbones on that delicious looking cake were the graphics your idea? Sort of my idea, but I didn't do them. I had an idea of what I wanted on there, but I am so untalented. I, I have one talent, telling stories. When God was giving out talents, he gave me this storytelling talent, and I turned around and grabbed the next person behind me by the collar and started talking and missed out on all the other talents. <laughs> but I, I did give that idea to an artist who put it together for me. Does all of this quirky, wonderful humor come through in your books? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it just I, sounds like so much fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even sure when I'm writing them that they are funny, and then I'll take my chapter to critique group, and they'll go, oh, my goodness, that's so funny. Oh, really? So I entertain myself. <laughs> Well, it is fun. It is fun to write these books. As a fan of Lindsay and the chocolate books, you entertain me as well, and I'm sure you've entertained a lot of other people. So is Death by Chocolate similar to anything else we may have read? There are a lot of cozy mysteries out there that I had read and kind of had in mind as I wrote. Janet Ivanovich's early books, Diane Mott Davidson, I think the main difference, in fact, I call mine uncozy cozies because my sense of humor is probably a little sharper and more intense than most of the cozies it's not at all a cozy sense of humor but I don't do a lot of blood and I do try to keep things light uh, you know as light as you can keep murdering somebody <laughs> well the way you brought in King Henry it's almost like this is a cat with a sixth sense did your, the real King Henry have that as well? He absolutely did, and that is exactly the way he came up to me. I went outside one day, and he walked up, rubbed against my leg, and I petted him and said, nice kitty, go home, and he turned around and ran through the door I'd left open, jumped up on the sofa, and there he was. I had him for 18 years. <laughs> and he was amazing. Everything in the books that I have King Henry do, Leo did. He was an incredible cat, and he was huge. When he first came, he weighed 14 pounds, and I took him to the vet after I couldn't find the owner, and, and the vet said, well, I think he's probably about six years old. Well, then he just kept growing and got to be 23 pounds, and just like King Henry, I had to buy him a German Shepherd dish for food because he couldn't get his head in the cat bowl. <laughs> so he was an amazing cat was he also a real sucker for catnip yes he was <laughs> oh my goodness he loved his yes all the things king henry does he mostly he's so dignified and serene give him a little catnip and oh my gosh he'd <laughs> suck it up roll in it his big old blue eyes would get crossed <laughs> well, oh, in, Leo, you have no dignity in your book Fred and King Henry are kind of cautious of one another. King Henry, I think, would like to be a friend. Fred does not particularly care about having cat fur all over him. What's the real Fred feel about having a cat around? Actually, the real Fred loves cats. He's involved with a lady in Oklahoma who has a cat rescue organization. But he is kind of fastidious. I kind of see King Henry and Fred as being so much like each other that they have a problem getting along. I found the way you drew Paula's situation into this book most interesting. How did you come about writing in the manner you did about the, the abuse? I was in an abusive marriage for a while. He wasn't a policeman, but uh, and I we didn't have children, thank goodness, but 
I was in an abusive situation, and so I kind of knew how to write it, and that was sort of a catharsis for me, too, was to write about that and to have the bad guy go to prison, which is where I wish my ex-husband would go. Or the morgue. I don't particularly care. <laughs> so how many Death by Chocolate books are there going to be? Uh, an infinite number until either readers get tired of reading them or I get tired of writing them. At this point, I have so many more ideas. I could, I can think of at least 20 more I can do. <laughs> Well, I, Sally, a lot of authors write because they have a message to share. Do you have a message for readers in Death by Chocolate? I have tried to think about what my message is, and the best I can come up with is to entertain. Sometimes I think, well, gosh, I have a talent for writing, and what am I doing with it? I'm writing funny books. Then I'll get an email from somebody who'll say, oh, I was going through a really bad time in my life. I read your book, and it just lifted my spirits. I was like, okay, that is my message, to entertain people and make people happy. I think you've done a marvelous job doing that. So do you go out and talk about your books? Do you do readings at bookstores, book clubs, libraries, and so on? And if so, what are the reactions from your audience? Oh, I'll go out and talk to people anytime they'll let me. I love to. I go to groups and talk, uh, bookstores, libraries. Generally, we have a great time. They laugh. They buy my books, like my books make new friends. So it's a, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a ham. I love talking <laughs> about myself, especially. <laughs> well, have you ever solved any murder mysteries? No, I really haven't. I've never been involved in any. I do watch Investigation Discovery Channel, though, <laughs> and try to figure out what the mystery is. But fortunately, I've never been involved in any murders. And it was really close sometimes when I was married to the ex. So does the Mystery Channel give you any ideas about what your next murder is going to be in the next book? It does. I have gotten some very interesting ideas. In fact, a chocolate mousse attack. I saw a show on Investigation Discovery and thought, aha, I've got to put that in a book. So that idea came directly from there. I'm not going to say what it is, of course. <laughs> it, it. <laughs> What is it about Death by Chocolate that makes it stand out in a crowd? I think it's the quirky characters and my quirky sense of humor. And I, my friends tell me that have known me for a long time, they say when they're reading the book, it feels like I'm just standing there telling them the story. In fact, I have audio books, and my friends help me choose my, my narrator because she sounded so much like me, and my friends think Lindsay sounds like me. And one of my friends from Texas called me and said, as I listen to these books, I have to remind myself that it's not you just standing here telling me the story. So in your audio books, does that sense of humor come through? Oh, yes. And my narrator does an amazing job of the emphasis and sounding like Lindsay. Do you have a group of friends that you give your books to read before you publish and take feedback on them for changes? Oh, yes. I go to critique group once a week. So as soon as I write a chapter, I send it to my critique group and they go over it. Then we all meet on Friday evening and they tell me what's wrong, what I need to fix. They help me brainstorm and I help them, of course. And then when the book is finished, I have an editor who's a friend I've known for a very long time. In fact, she helped me when I first started writing. She was very instrumental in helping me publish. And she goes through my books and tells me, oh, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, you got to fix this. So, yeah, they go through a lot of uh, revisions before I ever put them out there. And then once the revisions are done and once the books are out there, what are their comments afterwards? Are they pleased with their hand in the book? I'm not sure they read them. After they get out there, they've already had to go through them so many times. So <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't if it were I. So, well, okay, that makes sense too. <laughs> uh, do you have children? I do not. Then, uh, where did you come up with the idea of the little boy? I've known friends who had evil ex-husbands, and when there's a child involved, for me, escaping from my crazy ex was difficult. When there's a child involved, it's much more difficult. So I wanted to make it as tough as possible for Paula to get away from her crazy ex. So I gave her a child. So Sally, where can we learn more about you? 
about your other books, and most of all, where can we purchase Death by Chocolate? I have a website, www.sallybernethy.com, with all my books listed, and all my books are on Amazon. My paper books, tree books, are not in very many bookstores because I'm not that famous yet. They're in local bookstores, but you can buy them from Amazon. They are available, all of them. And that's both print and digital? Yes. So, Sally, in the minute we've got left, please share with our audience something about Death by Chocolate that's going to encourage them to purchase and read it. The chocolate chip cookie recipe, which is included, is the best chocolate chip cookie recipe in the whole world. (laughs) And I have to agree with that because I tried it. I created that recipe through the years. I kept thinking, this is not really what I want. And I kept changing and changing and changing. And people kept saying, oh, this is really good. And that's kind of the reason I became famous for my chocolate. Because when anybody wanted me to bring something, they said, oh, bring those cookies, bring that cake, bring that pie. And so I had become the chocolate queen. But yeah, the cookies are, if I do say so myself, pretty wonderful. I do love a good mystery, Sally. Mix it up with chocolate and a cat, and I'm ready to start reading. Thank you so much for sharing Death by Chocolate with us. I am so looking forward to talking with you again when you release your next in Death by Chocolate. Will you come back? Oh, I absolutely would love to. This has been so much fun. There's nothing I like more than to curl up with a page-turning mystery, taking bites of a piece of chocolate brownie or a cupcake (laughs) with a cat by my side, so much so that I tend to stay up and finish the story. I have a feeling that Death by Chocolate is going to be one of those books that bring on sleep deprivation. So if you love a murder mystery, a bit of sarcasm, great humor, and of course, chocolate and a cat, grab a copy of Death by Chocolate and join the world of the sleep deprived. And this is only book one. This is Linda Thompson concluding another edition of The Author's Show. Please share this interview with your friends and family so that they too may have the opportunity to discover our guest and her work. And why not help spread the word on social media as well? Please join us again next time for another exciting author and another great book on The Author's Show. Thanks for listening to The Author's Show. To contact us, call toll-free 1-877-955-8800. That's 877-55-8800. Or visit theauthorshow.com, theauthorshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show.